You cannot wait for summer, right? Days swimming, playing with friends, vacations. One of the most popular summer activities in the United States is getting together on the 4th of July to watch fireworks. On that day, there are many things to see and hear. We spend so much time enjoying those that we never stop to think about how they work. How do we see the colorful lights as they fly through the night sky? Or hear the booms of the finale? Well, it is all about energy. Let's explore that in more detail. Many 4th of July fireworks shows are set to music. When a musician plucks a guitar string or bangs on a drum, that guitar string or drum surface vibrates. Those vibrations travel through the air, knocking into the air particles surrounding the instrument. These air particles start vibrating in the same way as they spread out in all directions, bumping into more air particles. This creates a sound wave. The vibrating sound waves eventually travel into our ear, causing our eardrums to move. Our brains can convert those vibrations into sounds. And just like that, the energy of the vibrating guitar string has become music to our ears. Sound waves can be gentle like a whisper, but also really powerful like the boom of the fireworks. When you watch that fireworks show, and there is a big one, the energy from that explosion creates sound waves so powerful you can actually feel them. Sound waves can be everywhere, at the fireworks show and in your room. What wakes you up? An alarm clock? When that moment comes and the alarm goes off, the energy from the vibrations is transformed into sound. Sound vibrations are called waves, and they can travel through gases, like the air, liquids, such as water, or solids, such as a table or speaker. The substance through which the wave travels is called the medium. When the energy of a sound wave hits a medium, the medium starts to vibrate. These vibrations create longitudinal waves, which are waves that are moving in the same direction as the original sound waves. Sound waves are everywhere, so if you truly want peace and quiet, you are going to need to get away. Far away. Space has no air particles or liquids, so there is no way for sound waves to travel out there. Have a safe trip! Like sound, light is also a form of energy, and like sound, light also travels in waves. Light does not need air particles or liquids to travel, so unlike sound, light can travel through space. Light from the sun travels in waves to Earth. Visible light is the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that our eyes can see. It is also an energy that we can feel. What usually happens on the 4th of July? You might see a parade or have a picnic while enjoying the weather, but you also sweat, right? It is the middle of summer, after all. Well, that happens because we can feel the energy of the sun. Scientists are working to capture that energy and put it to work. Solar cells are being used to power calculators, road signs, garden lights, even whole houses. Solar cells capture the light energy from the sun and convert it to electricity. Los Angeles and San Diego are two cities using solar energy today. Some of that power produced by solar cells is used to power light bulbs. Just like solar cells convert light into other forms of energy, light bulbs convert electrical energy into light and heat. When you turn a light on, you are sending electricity to the bulb. This electricity heats up the filaments inside of the bulb. When it gets hot enough, it creates a chemical reaction that produces light and heat. Sound and light have a number of things in common. They can both be felt, they are both comprised of energy, and they both make the 4th of July fun. They do have their differences as well. Light can travel through a vacuum. For example, the light from the sun can shine here on Earth. Sound, though, needs a medium to travel through. This is why you cannot hear anything in space. There is nothing to carry the sound waves. 
Light is also part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is like a catalog of things that have electromagnetic radiation. This includes gamma rays, radio waves, X-rays, microwaves, and visible light. Everything along the spectrum has a type of radiation, or an energy, that starts in one location and spreads out as it travels from its source. Let's go back to that 4th of July celebration. The fireworks that we watch across the sky are the product of a chemical reaction. When the fireworks shell ignites, it is releasing three forms of energy, light, sound, and heat. Energy from heat is also what starts the chemical reaction that results in a brilliant blue or radiant red firework. When that reaction reaches its critical mass, it can no longer hold all of its energy, and the booming result is a firework. What other ways can energy be transferred from place to place by heat, sound, and light where you live? Reef animals generate vibrations, and these vibrations cause sound to travel through the sea. Kenna is one such reef animal. It likes to eat algae that grow on the reef's rocky surface. Kenna makes sharp, scraping noises when their teeth grate on the reef rocks. This is amplified as the vibrations resonate within the Kenna shell. This scraping sound is emitted from Kenna in all directions as a series of spherical pressure waves that travel at speeds around 1500 meters per second through the water. As the sound waves spread out, they get weaker because the energy in each wave is spread over a greater area. Lines of maximum pressure are drawn in the diagram. The distance between these lines is called the wavelength. Higher pitch sounds have waves closer together with smaller wavelengths. Only three of the sound waves are drawn to make things simple. A real scraping sound would produce a hundred or more waves with a range of wavelengths. There is little reflection of small crustacean larvae that are smaller than the sound's wavelength. However, bigger fish that are larger than the sound's wavelength reflect the sound in various directions. Very little sound is transmitted into the air when the waves reach the surface because the difference in speeds of sound between seawater and air is so great. Instead, the sound waves reflect back into the sea. Of course, there are many more sounds sent out from a reef. We have concentrated on one kind of sound from only one canna to simplify our explanation of how sound travels. Small crustacean larvae use the whole collection of sounds from the reef to guide them towards the reef where they settle and progress to their next stage of growth.